Hello and welcome back to another video on embroidery. Specifically today, I'm going to be discussing some digitizing techniques I use about stitch density. How can you reduce the number of stitches in your design without compromising on the look and the quality of it? So one thing I found over the years when I digitize, I do a lot of patches. And when you're doing a patch, you usually want to have that full coverage look. But when you're putting lots of details on a patch, if you put a full density to Tommy fill, for example, and then you're layering a satin stitch or a running stitch over that, you, you might notice you run into issues with thread nesting, thread breaks, the machine just can't get through it. So what I've learned is when I'm putting down my base fill, I reduce the density. So let's take a look at some comparisons here. So we have this patch here on the left. It was one of the first patches I made and I embroidered it on black fabric. So I didn't actually include any fill in the black parts. If you, if you look closely, you can see this is just the trill fabric, no stitches underneath. And while it looks okay, it didn't really have that patch feel I was going for. Usually a patch is completely filled and I didn't really like how the fabric looked in the background. So I would play around. And as you can see this patch, for example, I did put a fill and I just think it looks, it looks a lot better. So when I made this patch, I had just put a very light fill of black to Tommy over the black fabric and I did not use a full density fill. So talking about fill for a moment, let's move these out of the way. We have this little test piece I made. So. If you're not familiar with what density is and how it's measured in embroidery, normally, the, and these are all going to be in millimeters, normally a full standard fill for Titani is going to be 0.4 millimeters. So right here, we can see in most embroidery digitizing softwares, if you just select the Titani fill, it's going to default you to this full fill. Now you can play around with the density and by increasing the number so the higher you go you're going to actually get less stitches so what this is saying is at 0.4 millimeters it's saying there is 0.4 millimeters between the stitches and as you increase it for example this is 0.8 this is one you'll notice the stitches get farther apart and you can actually see the fabric through the thread so we can use this to our advantage to match the thread color with the fabric and it's going to have a lot less stitches but it's going to look exactly the same so here because i'm using blue on the white fabric the change is very noticeable so coming back here to the patch examples we can see for example these three patches they were all done on black fabric and the first base i put down was just a 1.2 millimeter tatami stitch with no underlay just one layer and I covered the whole bottom. So it looks like it's full. And then when I put my details on top, it stitches out very nicely. Looking at a few more examples here, we can see when I did this um, sushi, I did this originally on white fabric. So I was able to do the rice here in a 1.2 millimeter density, and it looks like full coverage. Again, here is this, this whale. And I actually did this whale in two colors, one on white, and one on black. This one isn't finished though. Um, but for this one, obviously a black background, it's 1.2 stitch density to Tommy. But also when I was doing the body of the whale, because the base fabric was black and this is like a dark purple. So instead of using the default 0.4 millimeter density, I was actually able to increase it to 0.6, saved a couple thousand stitches and it looks like a full density. When I did the white, same thing. I did the white background in 1.2. And when I did the light blue body and the stomach, I did it in a 0.6 density. And it looks like full coverage. So especially when you're doing stuff like this, not only do I have a tatami fill, but on top of it, I stacked a satin, satin stitch. So it was really important for me to make sure the underlay was not too thick or else it would have been a mess. I would have got thread breaks and everything. 
Alternatively, on these two, so on this one, because I used white backing, I was able to do the white, the, the rice in white, but I don't typically like doing my patches in white twill because then the border, I cut around my patches and the border is going to show. So on something like this where I have a black outline, I actually had to go in and with a Sharpie kind of mark the white edges. So when I did these patches, I did want to do them on black because as you can see, when I cut around it up close, you can see the trill, but from a distance, it looks fine. Like it's part of the outline. So when I was doing these patches, um, I did the skull, the skulls here were both done in a 0.6 density, but because the fabric underneath was black, I kind of had to do an applique method here where I placed a sheet of thin cutaway stabilizer cut around it, and then the white kind of filled over. But that's a different method applique. I don't really like using it because it can be kind of messy. Um, I'm not very good at cutting around neatly, so that will probably be a separate video. Now, aside from patches, this technique of playing around with density can also be used when you're doing more large artwork pieces, which I like to do occasionally. So we looked here. This was a piece I recently did. and because I was embroidering on a white fabric, I was able to do very light density. So we can see here this yellow on the flower petals. When I first put that down, it was a 1.2 millimeter density with no underlay. And then on top of that, I did this orange, I believe in a 1.6 millimeter density, and that's it. And it actually looks like a full fill, but because we have the white fabric underneath, it kind of gives you that illusion that it is a full density fill. Again, similar with this piece, um, we can see the hair. This is actually just a bunch of 1.2 millimeter fills. In some areas were overlapping, some didn't. For example, the light, the lighter gray pieces here. Up close, you can see this is 1.2 millimeter gray fill, and that's it. And you can see the fabric through it, but when you're looking at a distance, it looks fine. Now this kind of ties into blending and shading, which is a whole nother topic. And I will be eventually making a video on that, but just wanted to show you what the possibilities are when you play with stitch density. So now that we've looked at those real life examples, let's go ahead and pull up the digitizing software and show you what settings you need to adjust to make that happen. So here we have my digitizing software pulled up. I am using Hatch embroidery software. I'm pretty sure most digitizing programs do have the ability to adjust stitch density. Uh, so you just need to find the corresponding settings on your site if you're not using Hatch. This is my black cat patch, and we have two different versions here on the screen. The version on the left is the one I actually stitch out, and I've done the low density background. As you can see, the face is kind of see through with the gray. And then on the right, just to compare, that's what it would look like if I had done a full stitch density without reducing anything. Just to show you the difference here in stitch count, let's delete this one for a moment. So here, this is, I did the 1.2 millimeter density on the face as the black overlay. And if you look in the bottom right here in Hatch, we can see... It is 5,665 stitches. So to compare that with the full density fill, we bring this one back and look at the bottom right. You can see the stitch count has increased 9,649. So that's about 3,000 stitches more. So because I have reduced the, the density here, I have reduced my stitches by 3,000. As you can imagine, if I'm doing, you know, six or eight of these patches at once, that all adds up and it makes my design run a lot smoother. So with this pulled up here on screen in the software, it may look a little strange because you can clearly see the gray in the background. But what I like to do is when I'm digitizing so I can get an idea of what the finished product looks like, I will set my background to whatever color the fabric is. So in this case, it's black. So if I turn off my hoop view and hatch, you can see when we do that, it actually looks like a normal design and nothing strange about it. So now let's actually look into how you 
do this setting and hatch. So let's just start with a full density. So I'm just going to make a square. And we can see it. And you can see here on screen, we have a fully filled square. So to adjust the stitch density in hatch on the right hand side, you're going to want to have the object properties tab pulled up. And then we want to be in the fill tab. This is where we are going to be playing with the settings specifically under the spacing tab. So 0.4 millimeters is the default. So what I'm going to do is I like to do 1.2 with like my standard fill. Um, from there, I can adjust, increase or decrease depending on the look, on the look. But 1.2 is a great fill for one when you're trying to blend in to the background of the fabric, and also when you're doing blending and shading. So we're doing 1.2 fill, and then under the stitching tab, I'm going to turn off my underlay because this is such a light fill. Uh, we actually don't need the underlay. So I'm going to uncheck the box and you can see we are left with basically just the stitches running in one direction. And that's really all it is you have to do. So now again, when I have my gray background pulled up, it's very obvious. But when I turn off my hoop view, we can see it looks like a fully filled black square. So when I was doing this cat here, that's pretty much all I did. I did my digitized closed shape in a fill, made an outline of the face, and then I just adjusted the stitch spacing to 1.2 and turned off underlay. So that's really all there is to it. And then from here, you would just go about digitizing as normal. That's really all there is to it. No other special settings to change. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you do end up using this technique, let me know how it works out for you. And also, if there are other digitizing videos you would like me to make, please let me know as I'm trying to make the types of videos that I wish I had when I started digitizing. So thanks for joining me and have a good rest of your day.